In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can do the alignment automatically, specifically the correlation optimized uh, warping that we talked about in the previous uh, video. And in order to do that, we need some sort of measure of how well we are doing something we can optimize. And we're going to use two measures, in fact. The first one is called simplicity, and it measures uh, how well we have, al uh, have aligned our data. Imagine that we have a matrix that has a total variance of 1. That means that the eigenvalues from the cross product matrix would equal 1. Now let's say that the data look like this. There's four profiles and each come out uh, in a different part of the data. So you can imagine that this would lead to a rank 4 uh, model. And each component would more or less have the same size, which is what is depicted here. And we see that the sum of the eigenvalues uh, sum to 1. Imagine another scenario where you also have four profiles, but they all come out on top of each other. That's a rank 1 system. So all the variance is going to be in the first component and um, the rest will then be 0. So the first eigenvalue is going to be 1 and the rest are zero. So you see that these two uh, different scenarios, they have the same uh, eigenvalues, uh, summed eigenvalues. But if we look at the square of the eigenvalues, well, you see up here in the rank one system, the sum of the eigenvalues, of the squared eigenvalues uh, equals one, whereas down here, it's gonna be 0 0.25. And I, I hope that you get the intuition that the better we align the data, the lower the rank is going to be. And if the variance is the same, well, that means the higher uh, the squared eigenvalues are going to be. So the squared eigenvalues would give us a measure of uh, how well uh, we have aligned. And because we divide by the variance in the data, we have that the simplicity measured as, as the squared eigenvalues will be a number between uh, 0 and 1. Let's take a look at a data set. Here is a small data set and the simplicity of this one is 0.47. Let's try and align a little bit. You see here we have aligned somewhat and the simplicity increases uh, quite dramatically. If we go a little bit further, we get even a higher simplicity and a nicer alignment and here the alignment is close to perfect um, and we have uh, a much, well, a higher uh, simplicity value. Okay, so simplicity is one of the measures. The problem is I can align perfectly uh, by simply um, aligning sort of to a point by making everything into a point. I can get everything perfectly aligned. And we don't want that. We want to preserve the area. And so we actually have something we call the peak factor, which simply measures uh, how much does the um, area change. So if the area changes a lot, then the peak factor is going to change uh, quite a lot. And again, it's a number between 0 and 1. Let's look at a data set. This is the raw data. And since we haven't done anything, the peak factor is perfect. It's 1 because the area is maintained. Here we go a little bit crazy. Now you can see we have aligned the data quite well, but the shape has changed considerably. So this is what we would call a uh, not so nice uh, solution. Perfectly aligned, but the peak shape is completely distorted. This is a much better alignment. Uh, well, it's a much less uh, distorted uh, peak shape we have. And here, even better. So this peak factor gives us a nice measure of how uh, well we preserve the, the shape. What we can do now is that we can do an optimization um, based on these two numbers by measuring uh, different uh, selections of segment length and slack and see how well it optimizes uh, these two uh, numbers. And there's a tool for doing that 
unfortunately it's not built into the user interface but if you look in your uh, PLS toolbox you will see that there's a folder containing uh, the original uh, original warping toolbox that the cow warping is based on which is actually a um, toolbox that comes from our uh, laboratory uh, made by Giorgio Tomasi, Thomas Scott and Franz Vandenberg uh, and you can uh, download it here from MATLAB uh, if you want. Well in that tool there is a uh, optimization method called OptimCow and I'm not gonna explain all the details here uh, you can read the help if you want or read the original papers um, but what it does is that it takes some data some minimum maximum settings for slack and segment length and then it needs a reference method and some options we're just gonna use the default options but you can change those if you like and see what difference it makes now we we need sorry we need uh, to know which sample we're gonna use as a reference in this particular case we could just take the mean uh, for example but I'm gonna use another uh, function in this toolbox which is called ref select and let me just look at the help of that it's a function that helps you in selecting uh, a vector that you can use as a reference and if you're in doubt uh, what to do it's a good idea to play around with the different ones and see uh, what uh, difference you get in your results. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to select the mean signal because I think that will work quite well uh, for this particular data set. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take my data set and this is based on the same data that we used in the previous exercise well, maybe the actual selection is slightly different. Let me take a look. Just gonna do it like this. You see, I've made sure that I have a lot of baseline in the beginning and in the end, because otherwise it'll be difficult to do alignment of, for example, this peak here. If I had just taken uh, from this point and onwards, it would be very difficult to do alignment because there's no flexibility in the beginning and the end. So this is just a small part of the whole uh, spectral data set. 1000 of the original 7000 uh, algorithms. If, if things get a little bit too slow, well a nice trick is that you may sometimes, especially in the beginning when you're trying to find out what are reasonable settings, you may actually reduce your data set, maybe take every fifth or every third uh, variable instead of all of them. Uh, you may lose a little bit in accuracy, but it's probably enough uh, for still uh, looking into your uh, data and what settings work well. Maximum segment length is 5, no sorry, minimum, maximum 100, and segment minimum and maximum is 2 and 10. Let me run this and let's see what uh, chromatogram is selected as a reference. You can see that this particular sample is sort of in the middle uh, somehow, which makes sense. Uh, so from here on, this is going to be our reference sample that we try to uh, walk towards. So I'm going to put that here. And then I'm going to run this optimization. So I'm giving it the data. And I'm giving it um, the settings that I used the options and the reference sample that it tries to uh, uh, walk towards. Now you can see that MATLAB is calculating, but it's going to take a little while. Uh, so I might pause this until uh, we have finished the calculations. So after a few minutes, we're done. Um, 
and now we have as output that a segment length of 53 and a slack of 4 uh, provides fairly good results. I have to say that the optimization here is, uh, well, uh, the way the optimization is done means that when you repeat this, you can get quite different results. Um, so don't be discouraged by that. Um, but what we do when we have some results is that we simply uh, check and see if it actually warps well. Uh, so let me try and do that. We have our reference and we have these two numbers 53 and 4. I can look at the help of cow and that will tell me how to warp. I need my target here. I have my data, segment of 53, a slack of 4, and I don't actually need options right now. Okay, now I'm gonna warp my data. That's it. In X warped, I have data of the same size as the original one, but now warped. So let me try and plot both of them. I'm going to do it like this, so I can link the two plots. I'm going to plot the warp data. Okay, so that's the warp data. Let me just get rid of the white part here. Let's just turn like this. Okay, and I want the other part as well. So I'm going to say x2 equals subplot 2, 1, 2, plot x. And that's the raw data. x is type. And now I want to link the axis in both X and Y direction. I'll show you what that does shortly. Okay, so here we show the raw data and the warp data. So let me zoom in here. Now it's going to zoom in on both plots. Whoops, a little bit too much. It again, like this. You see, we clearly improved. It's not perfect, but we clearly improved uh, the alignment here. One of them went a little bit. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, that was wrong. This was the raw data, and we even aligned that one. So that part was fine. You, you, what you will have to do once you have warped is that you basically have to go through more or less everything and see if things look nice and decide whether you like it. Since there are many peaks, some of them may be well aligned and others less so. Uh, and you will find that it has to be a compromise somehow unless you have very simple uh, scenarios. But it does look like we improved things uh, overall. I didn't go through everything, but uh, it sort of looks nice. It does look like we improved things quite a bit. Now, let's say that I actually had freeway data and that I wanted to uh, align freeway data. But what I would have to do uh, in the current uh, version of the toolbox is that I would have to collapse my freeway data into, for example, tick uh, data, if we're working with GCMS data, align that, and then I can apply that alignment to each and every mass. Um, that's the only way we can do it with the current toolbox. Uh, there are other methods available that allow you to uh, do a little bit more uh, elaborate um, alignment. 
but in many cases it works fine uh, like this. Now before ending, I just want to say that what we looked at here uh, was only cow. There's a number of uh, other alignment methods, uh, uh, some of which may be more useful uh, for the type of data you're working with. And this is just one uh, paper highlighting uh, several of those. So it may be a good idea uh, to look into that. And before I end, I just want to say that we only covered a few types of pre-processing. There are many other kinds of pre-processing, not only in uh, PLS toolbox, but in other software packages as well. And it, it probably pays to look a little bit into uh, some of those and understand why and when uh, those are useful. If you do manage to pre-process your data well, what you should find is that basically the data is going to be more easy uh, to model because you get rid of um, uh, artifacts uh, and other types of variation in your data that is not of interest to you. And you represent your data in a way that makes the information uh, more accessible. But as always, when you do uh, things like that, there's also a risk that you over-process your data and thereby you actually remove useful information in your data. So you always have to validate and ensure that what you do is uh, making sense. So basically see if your models get better, maybe better predictions, maybe fewer components, maybe more uh, easy to interpret or, or whatever is the purpose of your analysis. Another final thing I would like to say is that it's very rare that pre-processing can turn really, really bad data into excellent data. What you normally would expect from pre-processing is that you can get a significant improvement of your model, but it's rare that you go from nonsense to perfect. Uh, so it's more like if you have a reasonable model, you can make it even better. That's what you would normally expect from pre-processing. Thanks.